Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to see if we can actually find a way to orbit this beautiful supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star using Space Engine. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So is it possible for us to actually orbit uh, this black hole, especially if we use a spacecraft feature in the game? Let's find out. What we're going to do today is talk a little bit about orbits, talk a little bit about orbiting black holes and possible effects that we'll encounter as we approach the black hole closer and closer. So first of all, let's just stop here and let's uh, place a starcraft, a spacecraft by pressing this button right here and creating a first spacecraft known as Harmony to be at a distance of approximately, uh, what is this, 200 something astronomical units, I think? Yes, 225 astronomical units away from the black hole. At this distance, our spacecraft barely feels anything. As a matter of fact, uh, the black hole itself has very little effect uh, on us right at, at this distance and so we're not really accelerating toward it uh, almost at all so we're going to move a little bit closer and try this again and possibly let's actually just choose a different spacecraft because i didn't realize this one's going to be so bulky looking and here's our second spacecraft uh, also a little bit bulky looking but this one actually looks a little bit better this is wayfarer and you can see right away that it starts getting attracted into the black hole even though we're we've only um moved about 120 astronomical units closer but right away it starts getting sucked into the black hole and starts moving toward it which is kind of what i was looking for and the total gravitational acceleration that it's experiencing right now is about 2.2 meters per second square, which is about the fourth of what we experience on the surface of our planet Earth. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to control the ship, we're going to take control of it, and try to establish uh, some kind of an orbit around Sagittarius A. Uh, you can see our speed toward it is increasing right here, it's already at 130 meters per second, and growing faster and faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button right here called Prograde and this will position us so that we're actually pointing at the velocity vector but right now I'm going to disable it and move a little bit to the left because I want to be pointing this way. I want to point so that we can actually establish a more stable orbit around this black hole and let's see if this actually works. All right, perfect. And now let's engage our engine's full thrust ahead. And we're going to be uh, moving this way and watching the parameters that you see in red on the right side here. So there's two things we need to um, we need to look at. One is called uh, periapsis and one is called apoapsis. So this is the lowest part of our orbit and the highest part of our orbit. The highest part will be where we are right now at 106 astronomical units. And the lowest one currently is at something like 600 meters, which is not really enough. So we actually need to try to move away a little bit and really aim at the, uh, the prograde here, just so that we can actually increase the periapsis to as much as possible. And I guess one of the better ways, one of the faster ways of doing it is to click this button right here for anti-radial and uh, blast your engines anti-radially away from the black hole or away from the anybody that you're trying to um, increase periapsis with. And this will actually make it jump dramatically. And as soon as you kind of like the number, so I'm going to actually stop at about a thousand kilometers, I'm going to now uh, return back to the prograde so that we can actually establish a more stable orbit because we need to increase our speed for us to be able to orbit this black hole um, without really crashing into it. All right, so now that we're moving uh, toward the black hole, or I guess toward uh, this area right here and increasing our speed and also increasing our periapsis, we're going to accelerate time just a little bit and this will allow us to pass time a little bit faster as we're changing our orbit, as we're increasing our periapsis. And you can kind of see the orbital path is growing. Um, it's slowly becoming more and more circular. You can also do uh, this right here. You can actually just boost the exponent. This is the uh, hyperdrive. You can actually hyperdrive uh, your way into increasing your orbit. Although I personally think this is not really as fun as just increasing the uh, the time and just watching the spacecraft move closer and closer to the black hole. 
All right, so our period abscess is now at point um, one astronomical, point one, one astronomical units. We can now maybe even shut down our engines and see how this looks as we approach the black hole. So in other words, we're currently in a very eccentric uh, and somewhat unstable, as it says here, orbit around um, Sagittarius A, uh, star and so let's actually accelerate time and let's see where this gets us so we're we're going to very likely approach the black hole very very closely pass by it and uh experience some crazy effects of uh gravitational pull and tidal effects and then move away back into our apoapsis of 100 astronomical units now what i want to do while i'm approaching the black hole is watch this number right here gravitational acceleration so as we're approaching this closer and closer the gravity that we'll experience will be higher and higher because we're technically in the free fall right now if you're on on the spacecraft you're not going to feel it but if the spacecraft was trying to move away from the black hole you would actually feel all of this so right now it's about a third of um, gravitational pull on earth as moving, moving closer and closer, it's going to increase dramatically. And right around now, uh, the gravitational pull is similar to the surface of Earth, and this is at a distance of about 52 astronomical units away from the black hole. Now we're going to keep going, and let's see how high this gets. This is going to get very, very high, and this will eventually start um, becoming the very, very powerful tidal force that will act on different parts of our ship differently, basically possibly making it break apart as well. Now we're now about 18 astronomical units away from uh, Sagittarius A star. Uh, it's very, very bright luminosity here is ridiculously high. And the gravitational um, forces that or gravitational acceleration we're feeling right now is close to about 10 times higher than it is on the surface of Earth. Now it's still not um, high enough for us to basically be spaghettified, obviously. Uh, simply because this is uh, a very large black hole and this would only happen if we go inside of it. But uh, nevertheless, this is actually really, really high. So if we were to try to start escaping from this black hole, we would have to deal with these ridiculously high gravitational forces. We can now kind of see the black hole. There it is, actually. We can now see the event horizon of the black hole. And the gravitational forces we're experiencing right now are essentially... 600 uh, meters per second square and remember that on earth it's about nine meters per second square so this is several times higher than the gravitational attraction on earth we're also experiencing really high temperatures of about 13,000 degrees celsius and the luminosity here and the amount of e energy and radiation released will probably kill most of the um, astronauts on board of the spacecraft within a few hours unless of course they're protected but very very thick um lead or titanium shields that would protect them from all of this uh, emission. Anyway, so let's accelerate a little bit more and get to about one kilometer per second square gravitational acceleration, which will happen in a few seconds. And there we go. So one kilometer per second square, that is a ridiculously high acceleration. If you were to stand on a planet that had this gravitational acceleration, you would most likely have all of your bones broken and become a pancake. And, um, this is a distance of about five astronomical units away from Sagittarius A star. But our periapsis is 0 0.12 astronomical units, so we're going to be approaching it much, much closer. So I'm going to accelerate time a little bit more, and we're going to approach it even closer. And right as we basically see everything, we get basically see the actual uh, event horizon, I'm going to check the gravitational acceleration here and it is close to 90 or 20 kilometers per second square so this is ridiculously high this is about 2000 times more gravitational attraction that we experience on the planet earth and so here things will start getting a little bit difficult for the astronauts especially if they decide to use their um, engines and move away from the actual black hole they will start experiencing some ridiculously high um, g's and it's increasing dramatically fast. So I'm going to change this to real time and you can see it's actually increasing very, very fast. And let's actually look at our speed. Our speed right now is 95,000 kilometers per second. That is about a third of the speed of light. So we're actually going to start experiencing the relativistic effects and uh, essentially the, the time for the astronauts here 
will move a little bit slower than the time for the astronauts left um, somewhere out there on the planet Earth. And you can also see a bit of a blue shift happening. So uh, at this location around the, the black hole, will um, everything will actually move a little bit slower compared to the outside and things will be blue shifted as well. So not only will uh, astronauts here will experience time travel, but they will also experience ridiculously high gravitational uh, tidal effects which may start breaking apart their spacecraft, although it's very likely that they might come out of this alive. Now let's move to our periapsis, uh, so this distance is about uh, 0.5 astronomical units, we're moving to about 0.13, and this will be much, much closer to the event horizon, and we'll basically zoom past it very, very fast at like a fraction of the speed of light, and we're going to be zooming past this location in real time at uh, about 57% of the speed of light. So at this point, uh, uh, the time dilation and other um, relativistic effects will start kicking in. Things will start looking longer and they'll be more stretched. Everything around us will be blue shifted. The astronauts are, uh, to, to people outside, they'll be moving in slow motion um, and are basically technically time traveling and we might be able to reach about 60% of the speed of light, and we're going to be zooming past the event horizon and through the accretion disk, which will actually very likely be deadly to the spacecraft, but we're going to imagine that it survives the encounter. So, at this point, the gravitational acceleration is close to, or actually over 500 kilometers per second square. Now, in comparison to Earth, this is about 50,000 times higher gravitational acceleration. Now, once again, you're not going to be experiencing it if you're an astronaut here because you're technically free falling, but if you were to start moving your spacecraft away from the black hole right now, that's when it would kick in and squish you and basically make you suffer. Uh, but because of this gravitational acceleration, uh, it does sort of act differently in different parts of the, of the spacecraft. And this might cause some tidal effects Oh, here we go, we passed through the accretion disk. This might cause some tidal effects that might actually um, cause us to experience some kind of destruction on the spacecraft. Some, some things might start getting a little bit bent, some things might start uh, creaking and stretching because uh, different parts of spacecraft, like this part, gets more gravitational acceleration than this part. So this would actually affect the actual structural integrity as well. Now we just passed our uh, periapsis, which was this green ball right here, and we passed it at a velocity of about 66% of the speed of light. The uh, gravitational acceleration reached something like 675 kilometers per second square, and it's now decreasing because we're now moving away from the Sagittarius A star, and we're moving toward our apoapsis, which actually has decreased dramatically as well. Now because this is an unstable orbit around a black hole, we'll never really be able to reach anything stable in this particular location. We need to be much farther away to have a stable orbit around this black hole, so since we actually pass so close to the event horizon, we'll very likely, after a few orbits, fall into the black hole, which is actually something that I want to try to do right now. We're going to accelerate time, and we've survived our first encounter with the periapsis, and let's see where we actually end up after a few orbits. So now the apoapsis is increasing again. And once again, this is because the orbit is not particularly stable in this location. And so here you can kind of see us moving away from the black hole and from the accretion disk. But we'll never really reach the same height as we did before, which was about 100 astronomical units. So we, uh, right now it says 32. 32 astronomical units is the new apoapsis. So let's reach that and come back to our periapsis and possibly uh, collide with the black hole. It's very likely that we might be actually able to enter the black hole after a few more of these unstable orbits. Now, after a third orbit, uh, my, both my periapsis and apoapsis changed again. And this will keep happening over and over because in order for you to establish anything stable around a black hole, uh, you need to be actually pretty far away from it. And because I was so close in terms of periapsis, I will not be able to actually have a stable orbit in this location. And so here is the passage number three, and the apoapsis decreased again. Or actually, look at that, it jumped up to about 260 astronomical units. So we actually got kicked out of the black hole uh, for some unknown reason. And I really can't explain why that actually happened. So our apoapsis has increased to even higher than what it was before. It's very likely because this might be actually a spinning black hole that kind of uh, gave us a slingshot boost away from itself. 
But you know what? Let's actually just stop completely. We're going to use our main engines to decelerate. And essentially free fall into the black hole with this very, very small apoapsis of about 100,000 kilometers. In other words, we're actually going to be entering the event horizon this time. And we're going to see what happens to our spacecraft as it plunges inside the black hole. So, in other words, we're just deorbited our craft. It's going to be moving at a ridiculously high speed. And I would also like to find out how high the speed is going to be when we reach the event horizon and when we pass through it, actually. Because of the acceleration, it's actually going to be very, very, very high. So, we're going to accelerate time just a little bit more and watch the black hole get closer and closer and closer to us. We're about 15 astronomical units away from it, experiencing really, really high gravitational forces again. Six, five, four, and here it comes. Uh, so, all right, we're moving at 65,000 kilometers per second. That's not as high as it was before. We're experiencing 8.5 kilometers per second square gravitational acceleration, which is also not as high as it was before. So we can maybe accelerate time just a little bit more and wait until we get a little bit closer to the event horizon. And here we go, 100,000 kilometers per second. This is 43% uh, percent of the speed of light. Let's move a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And right around here, we're going to just run it in real time. And so this is what it looks like as you would to fall into the supermassive black hole in real time. Basically, if you were to just kind of stop orbiting it somewhere uh, over there and if it were to gravitationally attract you into itself. And as you can see, the world around us is now going to be shutting down. We're essentially entering the event horizon and entering the singularity. The gravitational acceleration is um, about to reach the, uh, the amount that it was before, 600 kilometers per second square, and our speed is 63% of the speed of light. We're essentially crossing the event horizon. There is no going back now. And as we cross the event horizon, the universe behind us is going to start closing. The uh, time in front of our eyes will start becoming fast forwarded. So basically, if we were to look at a person um, on one of those planets, one of those stars, they would be moving in, f uh, in fast motion, in fast forward motion and we would be moving in slow motion for them. And we're essentially time traveling, entering the black hole, disappearing from this universe. And this universe is about to end for us because uh, we're about to essentially see the entire universe be destroyed in front of our eyes. We're moving at 80% of the speed of light. Gravitational acceleration is 1500 kilometers per second square. The universe is gone forever. We're not escaping this anymore. And let's see how high the speed will get. Oh, okay. So now we're, I think we're at singularity. So the game can't really handle it very well. Um, but I think the speed was 83% of the speed of light. And the gravitational acceleration right here at the center is 1700 kilometers per second square. Which is 200,000 times higher than the surface of our planet Earth. So here at this point, we will definitely start experiencing spaghettification. And things would stretch. Most of us would die a horrible, horrible death and would eventually be stretched into infinity. Now, can I actually get out of here? Is there any way for me to get out if I were to accelerate and if I were to use my uh, engines? I guess not. What if we use boost exponents? Nope, looks like we're kind of stuck here. Yeah, this is definitely the end. There's no way for us to get out. Our spacecraft is stuck inside the black hole. We might as well just keep it here. But you know what? This was fun. Anyway. Hopefully you learned something from this video and so hopefully now you know a little bit more about orbiting black holes, spacecraft, spaghettification, and uh, basically how high the gravitational forces are outside and inside the black hole. And I'm just going to escape the black hole manually and leave my spacecraft behind. And it's actually still right there. You can see it inside the black hole. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching educational videos using video games. And consider supporting this channel, Patreon as well. And you know what? Come back tomorrow. There's going to be something else educational, something else fun. Or we might just play a video game that will teach you something. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.